Hello, fabulous fourth grade. Thank you guys for tuning in with me. Again, I'm Miss Owens. I'm the math coach at Longwood Elementary, and I'm super excited to work with you guys. In today's lesson, we are going to solve problems involving patterns. We're gonna take a look at shape patterns and number patterns. Throughout the lesson, you will hear me use different vocabulary words. I will do my best to explain and break those words down to you. Before we get into the lesson, I want you guys to notice, pay attention to the key idea. I will use key ideas in every lesson to help provide thinking strategies for solving problems. In today's lesson, the key idea says, analyze the change from one term to the next. So in this lesson, we are going to think about what's happening in these patterns from one term to the next. Let's get into the lesson. So the first problem says, Examine the following pattern and draw the missing figure three on the board. I'll bring it down just a little bit closer to you guys. So if you look at the pattern, I'm shrinking. If you look at figure one, it's just a simple square. Figure one is actually term one. When you're talking about patterns, a term is like a group. So the first group or the first term is called figure one. You look at the second term, you have figure two. Now look at figure two. There's more tiles in figure two. How many tiles do you see? There's three. So the pattern went from one tile in the first term to three tiles in the second term. The third term, or figure three, has an unknown number of, of tiles. Whoa, look at figure four. There's a lot more here than there are in one and two. So in term four, we have one, two, three, four, going down vertically, five, six, seven, horizontally, seven tiles in figure four. So we went from one to three, I don't know that number, to seven. One, three, unknown, seven. Hmm. This pattern is increasing because the number of items in each term is increasing as you move across. Let me hear you say increase. Sometimes patterns decrease. When patterns increase, they could be using addition or multiplication. Let's solve this problem. Go ahead and write this down. So we're gonna look at Figure one, there was just one tile in figure one. When we moved across to figure two, there were three tiles. Figure three, there was an unknown number of tiles in that term. And when we moved across to figure four, there were seven tiles, okay? Let's write those numbers a bit more clearly. Okay, so here we still don't know what this one is. But from one to three, this, the terms increase by two. And if I go back to my key idea, how would I solve this problem? Analyze the change from one term to the next. That's going to be critical for us solving this problem. So from the second term to the third term, I don't know what's going on here yet, but I can see from the first to the second all the way to the fourth, it's still increasing. So I'm going to make a educated guess, or I'm gonna hypothesize, that from the second term to the third term, they might also be increasing by two, by adding two. And if that's true, then three plus two equals five, and that means that the unknown number here is five. And if that's also true, and I continue to follow that rule, the rule that goes along with this pattern of add two, then five plus two equals seven, and that would have been correct. So 
Let me make my final conclusion. The missing number is five. The rule that I use to find that missing number is add two. This rule and this pattern is called a repeating pattern. It's repeating because the number that you add from one term to the next is the same. Give yourselves a pat on the back. Whoop, whoop. You're awesome. Let's try one more problem before we end today's video. The next problem here says, whoops, find the rule that describes the pattern. 24, 19, 14, 9, 4. Wow, these numbers are shrinking. They're getting, they're decreasing. So let's write this up on the board so we can make it large, large enough to see. 24, 19, make sure you're writing this down, 14, nine, four. So again, if I go back and take a look at my key idea, it says, analyze the change from one term to the next. So I want to focus here. We're not adding. Because if the number begins at 24 and in the second term it's 19, the numbers are now decreasing. So instead of adding here, we might be subtracting. Can you think of another operation where you might, a number might decrease? Division. Because if I have four and I divide it in half, I won't have four anymore, but my amount will decrease to two. So we could be subtracting or dividing here. Most likely we are subtracting. Do you know the difference between 24 and 19? If you don't, you can use a number line. You can use a number line to find the difference from 24 to 19 or from 19 to 24. If I were to go back, I'll start at 24 and just go back one. That would put me at 23. If I were to go back three, 23, go back three numbers, that would put me at 20. Did I make it to 19 yet? Of course not. How many more would I need to go backwards to get from 20 to 19? Just one. So from 24 to 19, how much have I gone back? One, and then I went back three, so there I went back four, and another one. Total, I went back five. So from 24 to 19, you'd have to subtract five. Let's take a look at the next two terms. Analyze the change from one term to the next. What's the difference between 19 and 14 here? Wait a minute, you already knew the answer. Have you solved this before? Man, you're so smart and you work so hard. Awesome, way to go. So minus five here as well. What about here? What? You knew the answer again? Oh my goodness. Good job. 14 take away nine is also five. What did you say? It's another repeating pattern? You're absolutely correct. Can you tell me the rule at this point? The rule is subtract five. And I can write it using a word and the number or I can use a symbol and the number. And what's the difference here? Minus five. So we are learning that some patterns, whether they are shape patterns or number patterns, they follow rules and some of them are repeating patterns. Why is it, why is knowing if the pattern is repeating or not important? 
Because if I wanted to know what the, which number came before 24 in this pattern, I'd have to figure out, well, whatever this number is, if you take away five from this number, you're gonna get 24. Well, what number can you minus five from and get 24? 29. 29 minus five is 24. Good job. Hey, before we end, there's something going on with this pattern. Look at this. Look at the digit in the ones place in this term. The digit in the ones place here. The digit in the ones place, digit in the ones place, single digit, single digit. It's nine, four, nine, four, nine, four. It says if the digit in the ones place is alternating between a nine and a four. And I bet if I was asked to find the number that came before 29, the digit in the ones place would have a four. Sometimes you'll notice that there are other patterns going on within a pattern. Awesome, you're using your brain, amazing. Now that does not mean this number is going to be four. You already know what the number is? Well, what number could I have subtracted five from to get 29? It would have to be greater than 29 because you need to take five away from that number. 34, fabulous! You guys are so amazing. Look at you at home doing all of this work. You guys are fantastic. Well, I did have another problem, but we're out of time for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to tune in with me on Thursday. We're going to take a look at more patterns. We're gonna take a look at patterns that involve two-step rules. The rules that we looked at today were single steps, and they were repeating, add two or minus five. Sometimes patterns have rules like multiply by two, or multiply by five, or divide by two, or divide by five. But next time, we will take a look at patterns that follow two steps. Thank you guys for tuning in with me. You are fabulous. See you guys next time. Ciao.